We're ready. <laughs> Welcome to Bloomers in the Garden. I'm Len Schroeder. And I'm Julio Zamora. And on today's show, we're going to talk about core aerating, thatching, and power seeding your lawn. It's time to clean up your roses. We'll discuss pruning, fertilizer, and spraying. We're also going to talk about getting your pond started and how to get a jump on holding off that algae. Then we're going to talk about the latest concept in landscaping, adding edibles to your landscape. And we'll wrap up today's show by talking about vegetables that can be planted outside right now. So stay tuned and join us back in the garden after this short break. Hi, this is Len Schroeder from Bloomers in the Garden. Do you have a landscape, garden, or plant question? If so, call us on the Bloomers in the Garden hotline. Dial 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. Don't be shy. We want to hear from you. And if we use your question on the air, we'll send you a free Bloomers t-shirt. Call us at 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. And we'll see you in the garden. Bloomers in the Garden is brought to you each week by Bloomers Home and Garden Center. Bloomers is an award-winning garden center just 20 minutes from Philadelphia. Bloomers has been providing expert advice turning brown thumbs green for over 30 years. At Bloomers, we want you to ask us every question, even if you think it's silly. We share information in a friendly, non-judgmental way that is meant to teach and spread the joy of gardening. Visit Bloomers Home and Garden Center in Washington Township, Gloucester County. For directions, go to bloomers.com, and we'll see you in the garden. Spring has sprung, and it's time to visit Bloomer's Home and Garden Center. Bring us a soil sample, and we'll test your soil's pH free. Heck, bring us a water sample from your pond, too, and we'll test that for ammonia and other critical levels. Did you know that Bloomer's has a pond department? We have all of the water treatments, fish, and plants to keep your pond looking glorious year-round. Are you looking for that four-step lawn program? Bloomer's carries Scott's, Jonathan Green, Bonide, and Espoma's Organic Step Program. Need to seed? Bloomers has its own blend of seed called Township Turf. It's just the right balance of rye, fescue, and bluegrass to give you a spectacular lawn. It's also perfect for repairing bare spots and matches extraordinarily well to sodded lawns. Don't forget the garden. Bloomers carries bumper crop soil amendment and all the fertilizers a garden could need, both organic and inorganic. The best vegetables start as seedlings from Bloomers. Come visit those who know the friendly folks at Bloomers Home and Garden Center. Bloomers is located in Washington Township in Gloucester County, New Jersey, just 20 minutes from Philadelphia. For directions and information, visit www.bloomers.com. That's www.bloomers.com. And we'll see you in the garden. Man, the lawn is looking a little tired, huh? Yeah, yeah. well, it's been through all winter. Yeah, it needs a little makeover, huh? It does. Yeah, it does. You know, and there's that always critical question, do you crabgrass control or do you seed? You know, you can't do both. There's one control product that will work um, when you seed, but really, we're not talking about that. We need to talk about the different types of equipment that most of the time you rent a thatcher, a power seeder, or core aerator. Um, we talked about thatch at one point. Yes, we did. Let's let's talk about it again. Right. So thatch is what, Julio? Dead or organic materials that are below the uh, point where the grass meets the soil, right? Right. So it's above the root, below the root. where the crown of the grass plant is. Right. 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 Okay. So... That needs to come out, but not all of it. You don't want to get rid of it. A certain, uh-huh. a certain level is good. Uh-huh. Uh, you probably every two to three years, you might want to thatch. Yeah. Well, now, why is that good, then? The thatch, uh-huh. what it does is it protects the grass from drying out. Like in severe droughts, okay. it acts like a mulch over top of the roots of the grass plant. Okay. And it will preserve some of that moisture in the soil. Oh, so it does have an effect. It does. Okay. And thatch does break down and rot and creates nutrient right. as a nutrient value. Okay. But if it gets too thick, it can choke off oxygen to the roots oh, of the grass okay. plants. And it also, it starts looking where, you know, right. there looks like dead hay on your lawn. Right. Now, one quick question, one quick answer to that question uh-huh. of hay. 
hay. You're cutting your grass and it looks like hay. Right. Right now, uh-huh. this week, take the lawnmower blade off of your lawnmower. Right. And go get it sharpened. Oh, good job. Yep. Yeah. That's first what we thing. Need to do, right? You know, we always say soil test is the first thing. Right. Getting that yeah. that mower blade sharpened mm-hmm. will Critical. stop. It's, it'll stop that that like ripped, ripped torn back. look oh, okay. on the lawn, making a nice sharp cut, nice. protect against disease and, and other things, go. and protect from weakening your grass. That's but that, right. Well, you're here to talk about thatching. Thatching, yeah. There's a couple of ways to do it. Uh-huh. One, there, there are spray thatch removers, wow. and basically what it does is rotting that that layer that's in there. Mm-hmm. Um. No, let's see. How can we say this in a nice way? <laughs> That's right. it, it's it's almost like that uh-huh. Ridex that you put in it. You don't want to use it, the, the uh-huh. Ridex, and not, but just don't misunderstand. Okay. But it breaks down that sludge or that barrier of thatch mm. that's rotting and mm-hmm. excels that, and it puts those those microbes in there so that it'll rot it faster. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's okay. It's okay. Better than nothing. Okay. Better than nothing. Yeah. At least you're doing something, right? Yeah, and it also helps it to turn into nutrient value for the, for the oh, grass plants. That's too. better. But it's not something that's going to say, it's not going to replace no. physically getting it out. Oh, okay. Now, do you know what a thatch rake is? Yes. Mm-hmm. Explain a thatch rake. It's a rake, but it's kind of like rounded, yeah. right? And yeah. it's kind of... Um, it has fins. It has fins, yes. There's quite a few of them. Yeah. And yep. I've used that before. It's uh, pretty intensive. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Uh, That's right. It, it's it, a, it, it, it is. It and is. Where that it'll do the same thing a thatcher will do. Oh, I see. So if you have a small lawn. Yeah, you can it, do that, right? Yeah, it's easier doing that than going and picking one up. Mm-hmm. Now, we rent thatchers at Bloomer. Oh, yes, we do. You know, right? $65 for a day. I think oh, it's it not is. bad. And, and it, Again, it's a mechanical thatcher, mm-hmm. so, but you've got to pick it up. You have right. to return it. You, you know, it, right. it's not like it's right. not that easy. Uh-huh. Um, we also do thatching. Like if somebody calls up, they won't want their lawn thatched. We do do that okay. uh, as well. But let's not get off topic. Uh-huh. Power thatching. Power okay. thatching. Power wow. thatching is something where it you don't want to necessarily cut into the grass. Like I, I we've had thatchers ruined. Oh, we, we there's two different types there's a spring type mm-hmm. where it is like a metal rake not okay. not the stiff metal rake but one of those like metal re- leaf rakes leaf rake okay. and it goes through and it combs between the grass blades and it pulls up all that thatch oh. we used to have one in our rental fleet but it has been taken out because too many people put it low th- trying to make it a rototiller oh my gosh you know? <laughs> you're so, kidding no <laughs> so it no. took up the soil and, and, and well it actually broke all the tines off oh my so goodness. they'd return it and wow. it's not working and it's because <laughs> they, they, they they're trying to oh <laughs> to turn it over wow. like a rototiller yeah. so you got to be careful you don't want to go too deep so pretty much slim what you're saying you're just taking off a little bit of it and you're not taking the whole right. thing out right? right now now the other type is a chisel type, kind of like that, that rake that you talked about, oh, okay. where that goes, and that will work between the blades, but it also, it kind oh. of bounces because it's hinged in the right spot, okay. and it will pull up that thatch, that thatch. and in a good way, mm-hmm. uh, and to a certain extent, not fully, okay. but it, it will divide some of those grass plants oh, and yeah. divide those roots and help sure. it to fill in. Right. So that's, that's a good thing, yeah, and that's, a, that's what you want to use. Mm-hmm. That's what you want to use. And yeah, that, now, once it's thatched, do you rake all that away? You, you rake that okay. up, and, and it's got to go into, okay. you need to go into recycle. It needs to go, okay. you know, put it along the street to be picked up okay. or put it in bags. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, find out what your town's recycling policy is. That's right. Um, again, it's organic matter. Right. You Good. could. Uh-huh. You could. Compost it. Compost it. Yeah. You could. Okay. But, uh, again, mm-hmm. it's, it's, uh, that's going to be up to you, and to, but depending on what your town requires. Right. But it is a, definitely a good thing. Not every year. Getting rid of thatch is not, not what you year. want to do. You don't want to eliminate thatch. Oh, okay. You want to go and do it every, say, two or three years, uh-huh. and that that will create area for uh-huh. more grass to grow, uh-huh. for it to grow thicker, to to right. get the spots that are a little bit bare, right. and give a spot for those tillers that are, you know, mostly a lot of times bluegrass has a lot of tillers and other plants mm-hmm. where it will fill in and thicken up. So if you ha- haven't done it for a couple of years, now's the time. Yep. Right? Now's okay. the time to do it. Mm-hmm. You can do it also in the fall. Okay. But everybody's anxious to get their lawn looking great. Yeah. So it's a good time now. That's right. Look, make, uh, make it look beautiful. That's right. That's right. That's right. Now, 
one of the other things you can do, right? like say you have um, mm -hmm. areas that need to be filled in. Now, I don't recommend necessarily, you can throw down some seed right. if you want to with thatch, but it's not going to have the success rate if you use another type of equipment, which is called a power seeder, or sometimes okay. called a slit seeder. Slit. Slit seeder. Yeah. Think about this. Think of yeah. a series of skill saw blades on a machine right. that creates these little grooves in the soil okay. and then follow up right behind it, dropping little grass seed oh, in. That's great. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. <laughs> Rather do it by hand. That's right. right. And, and right. what that does, it puts it right in contact with the soil okay. because you have to get seed in contact with soil yeah, to break right. down seed coat, and then it germinates, and then mm -hmm. everybody's happy. Mm, that's great. If you go and you thatch, you're kind of putting it on the surface, and you have to water it in and hope that it gets to the yeah. surface, yeah. Into, yeah. The, into the soil, and right. sometimes it doesn't. It doesn't. Yeah. It's not going to be accurate. It's not going to be accurate. Right. It's not going it, to hit the soil. It, it's okay. It's okay. Not great. All right. Not great. I would yeah. say out of the three items we're talking about, it would be number three. Number three. Okay. Yep. Yep. Then let's see, we have the next thing is sure. with that power seeder, right. you get benefits of thatching oh, you do? because what happens is as you go through, uh -huh. you're dividing those grass plants by putting grooves into your lawn right. at the root level oh. because you need to get that seed in the soil right. and you adjust the equipment so that you're going just a little bit like quarter inch depth, uh -huh. maybe, maybe okay. even less and that you're placing that seed in mm. that spot. So you're dividing those grass plants, oh. and you're getting the benefit kind of like how it pulls up a little bit of thatch, so almost like how a thatcher would. Well, it kind of cleans it up a little bit. It, it does. Yeah. It does. Now, yeah. I don't recommend picking up that thatch because, right. again, you want uh, you, you cut mm -hmm. your grass first, by the way. Before you do, before any, you do, of, before okay. you do any of the things that we're talking about, you need to cut your cut grass. Cut the grass. Oh, yep. okay. Cut the grass mm -hmm. first. Right. Um, and you leave the thatch there. It's almost like a seed cover. Nice. Keeps birds off of it. Does uh -huh. some other things, and then right. the next time you mow, you're, you're just either mulching right. it, and then again creates a little bit of a seed cover right. on top of that seed. And again, a slip seeder slip. is different than a thatcher. Slip. It is a so different piece of equipment, mm -hmm. and if you need to seed even bare soil, you that's what you want to use. Great, that's good to know. Yep, good to know. Yep. Next thing is core aerating. Core aerating. Takes a plug out of the ground. Uh-huh. And that is probably the most underused piece of equipment there is. There is. Wow. It goes in, divides the, the grass plants, goes uh -huh. down deep, pulls out a plug. Right. And uh, to, to be, I'm sorry, I'm going to be a little crude, but it looks like that a goose, her, a, a whole flock of geese had been on your yard <laughs> after you're done. <laughs> And uh, that you can throw down some seed in, in right. those little spots where oh. the plugs are pulled out. The That's seed great. goes in the soil. Oh, I like that idea. That's but great. do not rake them up. Do not oh, rake leave them it up. On there? Do not rake them up. Okay. Let the rain go, go. Put down the seed. Let okay. the rain wash that seed into those little spots that are that have been made by that yeah. core aerator. It right. divides the plants for grass plants. So the grass plants, existing grass plants, will oh. fill in and, and get a little bit of that elbow room. Right. It'll also create a little pocket for the seed to germinate. Oh, great. And make sure that after you do this, put down a little bit of starter fertilizer. Okay. Okay. Uh, we use Jonathan Green starter mm -hmm. fertilizer, right. and it's excellent. Mm -hmm. And that always feed it afterwards. Mm -hmm. um, but, again, you can't do a crabgrass control until yeah. after that grass has right. been up and cut it cut at least twice. Wow. 31 days for, for bluegrass. So you've got a long wait. So you may not even get that crabgrass application in. Mm -hmm. Most of the time it's okay because right. you'll crowd it out. If you need to do a liquid crabgrass killer later on, right. you do spot treatments and you can take care of it then. Wow. So if your lawn's looking bare now, go ahead and do one of these, uh, one of these and that it will help it's get your help. lawn back into Golf course green. Oh, there we go. Golf course green. Want. Yes, we Golf do. We green. want that. That's right. <laughs> Beautiful stuff. <laughs> yeah. Core aerator. That, core aerator. I was going to do one. That's what I That's did. what one you do? Yep. Oh, yeah? Yep. Okay. All right. There we go, folks. All right. In our next segment coming up, we're going to be talking about roses. Ooh. Yeah. Great. I it's time. It. Oh, yeah. All right. <laughs> we'll be back right after this. Are you tired of insects ruining your trees and shrubs? Need a product that will prevent insect damage on tall trees but can't reach the top of your trees with your sprayer? Monide has the answer. 
Annual Tree and Shrub Insect Control kills insects on trees and shrubs from the inside out. One easy application kills most insects, including leaf miners and borers. One early spring application prevents insect infestations for up to one year. No spraying, no ladders, no mess. Just mix as directed, using a bucket or watering can, and pour at the base of the tree or shrub. The systemic insecticide is absorbed through the roots and will travel through the entire plant. It will not wash off. Monite Annual Tree and Shrub Insect Control can be found at Bucks Country Gardens, Doylestown, PA. Shady Brook Farms, Yardley, PA. Delray Plus True Value, New Hope, PA. Dreaming of a gorgeous garden? Give your azaleas, rhododendron, blueberries, and evergreens a powerful boost with the number one acid-loving plant food, Espoma Organic Hollytone. Hollytone is a perfect blend of natural long-lasting ingredients that nourish plants for stronger roots, faster growth, and bountiful blooms. Plus, it's easy to use and safe for people, pets, and planet. Visit Espoma.com for a retailer near you and helpful gardening tips. Espoma, a natural in the garden since 1929. Tired of growing the same old herbs? Do you want to expand your knowledge of herb gardening? Come to Herb Your Enthusiasm, Saturday, April 6th at Bloomer's Home and Garden Center in Washington Township, Sewell, New Jersey. We'll discuss herbs for cooking, but we'll also expand into herbs for essential oils and herbs for homeopathic medicinal purposes. Bloomer's will even demonstrate how to muddle and activate herbs into releasing their aromatic awesomeness to create the best cocktails ever. During Herb Your Enthusiasm, you will plant a container herb garden, and all the starter materials are included with a $45 registration fee. It's going to be a fun night out for couples and friends that you won't forget. Call Bloomers today and register for Herb Your Enthusiasm at 856-589-0200. That's 856-589-0200. If you're looking for more information, just go to www.bloomers.com. So much fun is waiting for you at Bloomer's Home and Garden Center, just 20 short minutes from Philadelphia, and we'll see you in the Herb Garden. Hey, we're back. Oh, yeah. And we're talking about roses. Uh, And this is for people that have grown roses and have roses. Um, Hybrid teas, floribundas. Uh, We're going to talk about climbers. Climbers, yeah. Friend of Flores. So, you need to cut your roses back now. That's right. And there's a reason. You, you'll get better blooms later on. Right, right. To stimulate, stimulate the plant, right? Yep. And two methods of thought. Mm-hmm. Most of the big roses where people are buying, like Mr. Lincoln right. or Queen Elizabeth right. or some of those named varieties, right. not shrub roses so much. Shrub roses are easy. Shrub roses, you you yeah. take care of them. Yeah, you can yes, air, you can cut out some of the middle to air them out a little bit, uh-huh. but they can almost be done just like a hedge. Yeah, cut it. You just quick. Yeah, nothing mm-hmm. special. Yeah. But hybrid teas, Florabundas, yeah. those you want to do differently. That's right. Two two heights. Mm-hmm. One is about a foot off the ground. Wow. And you want to cut them back. Mm-hmm. You want to get rid of any black canes. Mm-hmm. And now is the time, by the way. You time it with Forsythia. Forsythia are ready to bust over go. any day. By this, by this weekend, they're probably going like crazy. Yep. You want to cut down any of the diseased or damaged dead wood. Like mm-hmm. So if you have broken branches, branches or branches that have like a little nodule cut out of them or right. someplace where they're rubbing, uh-huh. you want to get rid get of that all that. Out. And don't worry about this. This is something, anything smaller than a pencil, mm-hmm. Eliminate it right to the bud union. Wow, that's good to know. All right. Mm-hmm. All right. What's a bud union? A bud union is where that little lump is, yep. a little bump like. <laughs> that's right. And uh, you can see that when uh, it's right underneath, it's, uh, right underneath the. Um, the uh, where the plant is? The pl- uh, no, where the. It's uh, where the root meets the plant. Yeah. And that's the graft. Okay. Because for most roses, and these are hybrid roses, mm-hmm. they have a different root than they do for the top. Right. So the, the actual hybrid plant is grafted onto another, another plant. plant. Now, now for to, to, to dumb it down a little bit more, right. it's glued on top. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> <what it is. laughs> so a little plastic cool. surgery glued uh, it on top, right. and, and, it's, uh, and it works. <laughs> it does. And a lot of our plants are that way, but we don't want to get hung up with that. Yeah. 
because you want to clean it out so that you may only have like six or seven stems showing right. and they only be a foot off the ground right. and they'll be cut they'll be cut thick you know you know you'll have those thick those sure. thick branches right um not the thin ones the thin ones and spindly yeah. ones you want to just clean them up and you want to open it up to the center so that it looks like it's going in outward directions right. you right. don't want any heavy growth in the center so, of your plant because that's disease 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 yeah. issues yeah. disease issues. aeration right yep keep it airy inside mm -hmm. to, so air will flow, flow through, through it and keep the diseases away oh, that's great anything smaller than a pencil Get rid of good right to the bud unit. That's good to know. All right. Mm -hmm. Now, climbers are a little different. Mm -hmm. Climbers, you want to keep mm -hmm. that tall growth, but what you'll do is that lateral growth, you want to get rid of Cut that. Cut it. Yep. Okay. Yep. You want to get rid of that. Mm -hmm. um, so, again, it's the lateral growth that are coming off of what you would consider main canes. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's, that's what you want to get rid of. Anything dead again, right? Yep, anything dead. You want to stop any real crossing, crossing branches, branches where they may rub yeah. when the wind blows because that's right. going to set you up for, mm -hmm. again, disease issue. It could be Big a, time. you know, it could be borer issues uh, into the cane. Uh -huh. Now, here's a, a quick trick. After you're done pruning, right. go ahead and take a little Elmer's glue uh -huh. and put that on the top right. of the cut. You're kidding. And it seals it off so you don't wow. have borers get in there. Wow, that's great. Yeah. I haven't used Elmer's glue since I was a kid. You probably <laughs> ate some when you were in school, didn't I you? Did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh my goodness. Yeah. <laughs> Brings up memory, memories. There right? you go. <laughs> but it's just it's just one of those things that's that great. it seals it off. How about and, that? And so again, you're breaking it down to where you may right. have only five, six, seven canes from okay. your rows. Right. But just wait, because when that thing grows, it's pushing all that power into Thank getting you. flowers. Wow. That's good. Flower power. Flower power. Flower yeah. power. That's, that's what it's about. That's what it's about. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> that's right. Uh, so, um, again, smaller blooms on smaller plants. You, right. you don't have to go so deep where it's only like a foot or 18 inches. Uh -huh. This, you could go 24 to 30 inches. Okay. You'll have smaller flowers, mm -hmm. um, but it'll be a bushier plant. Oh, okay. It's a little bit taller. A little taller. Yeah, the, when you do on the smaller ones, this when you go to that only foot to 18 inches, right. that's when you're doing hybrid teas. Think of it this way. When you look at a rose bush, you're looking at the flower, the individual flower. Okay. That's normally a hybrid tea. Hybrid tea. Sometimes floribunda, granted mm -hmm. flora, but, but it's mostly a, a, a hybrid tea, and that's where you want to do that low, low cut. Low cut. Okay. When you're looking at a, a rose and you appreciate the entire plant where there's rose flowers all over, all over it, yeah. that's when you do that little bit of a higher, higher cut. Higher cut. Yeah, yeah, so a higher, higher pruning. Yeah, you're not cutting it all the way. Right. Yeah. That's exactly you right. You know what, you're, uh, what you had. Right. right. That's it. Mm -hmm. That's it. There you go. Um, I would go ahead and feed at this okay. time. Great. Want to do rose tone. Rose tone. Rose tone. Quite frankly, is the best. Organic, Organic. releases slow. Mm -hmm. Roses love it. Roses love it. The, there's root action going on. Mm -hmm. You know, buds are beginning to swell when you're when you're out there pruning. You'll see. Mm -hmm. So that's something to do. You do it now. You do this now, right now. Right, right now. Right when you're done. And then, what, do you have to redo it again later? Or oh yeah, that? you're going to do it probably every six to eight weeks. Okay. Roses are pigs. Oh yeah. <laughs> they just they love to eat. Ooh. They love to eat. And then you're going to yeah. do a liquid. Um, a, fertilizer that you could do now okay. every two weeks if you're hitting them with uh dare i say it miracle grow it's okay, it's okay. a little high in nitrogen for me mm -hmm. jack's classic Jack, you like that one? i do yeah. jack's classic is better the okay. science is better mm -hmm. um that's what i would put down there you go, for, the, for the roses as mm -hmm. far as a water soluble soluble um the other thing is use the rose rx systemic drench right, right. now okay and that that will Make the plant poisonous to insects and disease. Right. That's a winner. <laughs> right. That's that is a winner. winner. Yeah. And, and how does that systemic work? Do you... uh, it, it, think of it like an antibiotic. works through the uh -huh. root system of the plant, is okay. absorbed through that, and goes throughout the entire plant mm -hmm. and makes it poisonous to the insect oh, and insect. disease. Wow. Easy peasy. Easy, yeah. I Easy like that peasy. One. <laughs> Great. All right. So you've got your roses all set? Yes. All right. Okay, we're ready. Yep. Yeah. On our next segment coming up, we're going to talk about, ooh, wow. 
What? Getting in the water pond. Oh, we like that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We'll be right back after this. Stay tuned for the Bloomers Garden Minute. The Garden Minute is brought to you by Bloomers in the Garden, Philadelphia Garden Radio. Find us on the radio dial or on the web at bloomers.com. This is Len Schroeder from Bloomers in the Garden for the Garden Minute. Now that the weather is getting nicer, don't forget about your houseplants. Houseplants are also coming out of dormancy, and it's time to start fertilizing. Start them off slow with a 50% solution of water-soluble fertilizer. We recommend Jack's Classic. It's the original Peters fertilizer from back in the day. Wait a couple of weeks before feeding again, and then once a month when you water. Wake those houseplants up gently and start checking for insects. The plants aren't the only things getting active. Thanks for listening to the Garden Minute. If you have a gardening question, call the gardening hotline at 609-685-1880. Call the hotline 609-685-1880, and we'll see you in the garden. Today's Garden Minute was brought to you by Bloomers in the Garden, Bloomers Home and Garden Center. Also brought to you by VPG, the Fertilome people. Fertilome Succulent Potting Mix with EcoPeat is the perfect ready-to-use potting mix for all your succulents. Fertilome Succulent Potting Mix is a blend of sphagnum peat moss, perlite, and eco-peat. Eco-peat is a natural wood fiber from peat bogs. When added to Fertilome peat moss, it produces a superior professional substrate with an exceptional ratio of air porosity and water holding capacity. Fertilome Succulent Potting Mix will ensure maximum drainage with ideal water retention. It's simply the best succulent mix on the market. Ask for Fertilone by name at your local garden center. Available at Daniel's Garden Center, Sumney Town Pike, Harleysville, Pennsylvania. Gasper's Home and Garden, 316 Tanyard Road, Richboro, PA. Hi, this is Len Schroeder from Bloomers in the Garden. Do you have a landscape, garden, or plant question? If so, call us on the Bloomers in the Garden hotline. Dial 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. Don't be shy. We want to hear from you. And if we use your question on the air, we'll send you a free Bloomers t-shirt. Call us at 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. And we'll see you in the garden. Well, Ed, I tell you what. We're getting into that pond, aren't we? We are. Yeah. We are. Weather's getting nicer. Yes, we are. Yeah. Uh, pond temperature, 50 degrees, is when yeah. you start feeding your fish again. There you go. And that uh, you want to use a certain type. You don't want to just go out and feed what you were feeding in the, mm-hmm. the summer last year. Right. You want to do a certain type that's a little bit higher in protein. Mm-hmm. Um, and that you want to use, say, uh, let's see, I know there's an early spring, and it may say even fall oh, okay. on the package. Uh, no Tetra has one. I know there's mm-hmm. different companies that'll be labeled that labeled way. Yeah. High in wheat germ, and that's what you're looking for. Right. Something high in wheat germ. That's good. So, so uh, they, see, they're not going to be uh, so aggressive right at this point. They're still a little bit. Yeah. Slow, right? They're waking up. They're waking up. They're waking yeah. up. So you're not going to feed them, you know, high protein. Yeah. Keep an eye out for babies. <laughs> is that what it is? It, well, what'll happen is like all of a sudden you'll say, "Oh, I didn't know I had this many fish." Wow. And that's because. You know, things happen. Yeah, things do happen. You know, birds and bees and <laughs> that's right. I guess the koi and the shabunkin. <laughs> is that what it is? <laughs> that's right. That's right. Yeah. And you know some that it all comes down to it that with that wheat germ formulation it's mm-hmm. easier for the fish to digest. Oh, okay. So yeah. water's still cold. It's mm-hmm. not oh, it's yeah. not they're they're not super active right. yet. But they are coming to the surface. I bet you'll see them yeah. at the surface and that they're finally, you know. Mm-hmm. They're, they've kind of come out of hiding. That's right. A little, a little activity. That's right. Uh-huh. That's right. Second thing, most important, come to Bloomers and see Becky. That's right. Okay. Becky will give you a free water test. There she go. will test for ammonia. She'll test there your pH. pH. She will find everything and Salt. see if your pond is good to go. That's right. Because you may have to make some adjustments. Mm-hmm. Let's, yeah, let, me, let me give a quick demonstration. Yeah. Okay. Ahead. Ammonia. Right. Okay. And... And everybody's seen the Lion King, right? The circle of life, that you know, the whole thing, right? Yeah. Anyway, so the the whole point of the nitrogen cycle is the circle of life with your pond and your filter. Mm-hmm. If you have high ammonia, 
and Becky tests and you you have a high ammonia level. Okay. That okay. means you've got stuff rotting in your pond. Oh, and if you're and it's given off that ammonia. Right. Now, that ammonia goes into your filter. Mm-hmm. Okay, comes out. Mm-hmm. It's basically miracle growth for algae. Oh, wow. Because it makes it safe for fish, mm-hmm. but it also makes it so that it's food for algae. Oh, okay. Now, if you get that, you need to get that under control now. Mm-hmm. Now, as ammonia, is that like a gas? Ammo- it, it is. It yeah. is basically rotting. Rotting. It could be leaves. Leaves. It could be twigs. Okay. It could be fish poop. Oh. Listen, you need to clean your pond. A, a, when we do a pond cleaning, what we do is we first get the fish out. Okay? We, we right. lower the water level, get the fish out. And we put them into a tank and hold them there with the water that we're taking out of the pond so that they're used to that. Mm -hmm. Then we go and literally power wash wash the the whole thing to get Mm -hmm. the old algae off. Because, again, that's what's causing ammonia issues. Cleaning all the rocks off, getting everything Mm -hmm. all set. Then we fill back with water. That's right. Okay. We add a little bit of that water that we got. With the fish that fish, you slowly in. enter those fish back in because you don't oh. want to shock them. Right. If you need to float them, you put them in bags and so you get them used just like you did when they were brand new. Right. You got to get them back to that water temperature again. Okay. But the issue is, is you clean up all of that algae producing sludge that was in the bottom. Oh, yeah. If your pond's pretty good, mm-hmm. you can use that in it and just by using a product called Micro, Microblift PL. Right. Okay. That will go and break down that sludge. Right. The same way. Remember we were talking about the th- a thatch and how yeah, the thatch is the that Ridex thing. That's right. Same thing within same the thing. pond. It's ah, that that same product that Microblift also makes the thatch control, ah, <laughs> and that it does goodness. the same thing because it breaks, breaks down, down all, all the sludge in your right. pond yeah. and breaks that down so that it's safe for your fish. You and basically, you know, a little it could do a great cartoon commercial of it eating yeah. up that stuff that's right right and that will bring that uh, ammonia level like you'll also want yeah. to put some salt in your pond salt. now that's right what's that what's the big deal on that salt line well it's don't think of it like gatorade okay you no know, rehydrates wow. yeah rehydrates your fish you want to okay. put in if you're doing a water change whenever right. you put water in you want to do a treatment of heavy metal right. chlorine neutralizer that helps also with the slime coat. Okay. Uh, there's something called stress coat. Stress if coat. you're moving your fish around, mm-hmm. same type of thing. Oh, okay. will add to their slime coat because if right. you believe it or not, you want a slimy fish. Yeah. That's right. Uh, it makes it healthy. healthy. Keeps it impervious to diseases and That's what we want. other things. Mm-hmm. Something important. But again, you want to know these things <laughs> by getting a good quality water test. There you go. Call Becky at Bloomers. From the get-go. Call get Becky back. at Bloomers. She would be more than happy to do That's a right. uh, water what test passed. for you, and then she'll let you know mm-hmm. what you need to do. That's right. Yeah, but again, that first step. first thing to do is to start feeding with a food that is a wheat germ, wheat germ wheat food. Germ, right? It'll, it may say fall on it. That's okay. That's okay because yeah, that's the okay. one that you're using. You kind of like ease back into your other diet, that's but right. you start with that spring-fall diet. Right. first then you go into some yeah, of the heavier. regular foods right that's right okay. so let's see let's review okay ph right is pH. important that's right ammonia important ammonia. super right. that's super important yeah. right water quality it's all about water uh, quality yeah, because again it. if you have high ammonia mm-hmm. it goes through the filter and it comes out miracle right. grow for yeah, algae yeah boy nobody wants that yeah. nobody wants that nope all bloomers ask for Becky. That's right. We'll test She'll you. take we'll care test of you. you. Yep. That's right. That's right. Hey, if you're looking at the number, 856-589-0200, ask for Becky. She oh, will help yeah. you. Oh, All right. Yes. Or call the hotline. Uh, yes. We will more than call the hotline. Yes. All right. We're 609-685-1880. Here for you. That's, That's what it's all about. Leave a message. We will make sure Becky gets back to you. That's right. All right. Next segment coming up. Oh, boy. Here we go. Yep. The landscape isn't what it used to be. No. It's It's now turning edible. Oh, my goodness. That's great. (laughs) All right. (laughs) We'll be right back after this. Do you want a picture-perfect lawn this year? It all starts with using the best grass seed available. Bonod makes that happen with DuraTurf Grass Seed. 
Bonnot is using the best varieties of grass seed available today for their DuraTurf grass seed blends. When you start using Bonnot's full sun, sun and shade, or dense shade grass seed blends, you will have a lawn that is self-repairing, disease and insect resistant, and will grow in poor soil. You get all these benefits along with having a naturally durable dark green lawn. When planting grass seed, always use Bonnod's Lawn Seed Starter Fertilizer to get your grass off to a healthy start to ensure that picture-perfect lawn. So don't wait. Let's get that perfect lawn started this weekend. Bonnod products are family made in America. DuraTurf grass seed is available at these fine retailers. Bucks Country Gardens, Doylestown, Pennsylvania. Lehigh Valley Home and Garden, Allentown, Pennsylvania. Lynn Villa Orchards, Media, Pennsylvania. Tired of growing the same old herbs? Do you want to expand your knowledge of herb gardening? Come to Herb Your Enthusiasm, Saturday, April 6th at Bloomer's Home and Garden Center in Washington Township, Sewell, New Jersey. We'll discuss herbs for cooking, but we'll also expand into herbs for essential oils and herbs for homeopathic medicinal purposes. Bloomers will even demonstrate how to muddle and activate herbs into releasing their aromatic awesomeness to create the best cocktails ever. During Herb Your Enthusiasm, you will plant a container herb garden, and all the starter materials are included with a $45 registration fee. It's going to be a fun night out for couples and friends that you won't forget. Call Bloomers today and register for Herb Your Enthusiasm at 856-589-0200. That's 856-589-0200. If you're looking for more information, just go to www.bloomers.com. So much fun is waiting for you at Bloomers Home and Garden Center, just 20 short minutes from Philadelphia, and we'll see you in the Herb Garden. Hi, this is Len Schroeder from Bloomers in the Garden. Do you have a landscape, garden, or plant question? If so, call us on the Bloomers in the Garden hotline. Dial 609-685-685. 1880. That's 609-685-1880. Don't be shy. We want to hear from you. And if we use your question on the air, we'll send you a free Bloomers t-shirt. Call us at 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. And we'll see you in the garden. Well, we're back. Yes, we are. All right, so you're working in the garden, oh, yeah. trimming your roses, or you're, uh, you're out uh, putting down mulch. That's right. Yeah. How, would you like, ready. how would you like to be able to just, like, reach and grab some blueberries out of oh, your landscape? I would love that. Yeah? Would yeah. you like that? Oh, yes. Strawberries? Strawber- oh, yeah. yeah. I'll tell it. you, there's a whole series of plants right now, and it and it's not only that. It's uh-huh. lettuce and, and other plants to put in your landscape. Oh. So many of the products that we used to use that were a bad chemical, let's say. Right. And that it would control insects or, or weeds that, that would be, can't put it around edibles. Yeah. Now there's so many different organic options that you could have your whole landscape all organic uh-huh. and it would be the same thing that you would spray or put into your garden. Oh, so beautiful. here's the thing. That's great. The whole series that, that is out now is bushel and berry. And it's a new collection, star plants. Right, star plants. And that, I mean, just just great ideas where it's dwarf blueberries and yeah. thornless oh. raspberries. Oh, I tell you. And that you can mix it into your garden right. rather than have, this is my berry section. You know, right. it's just another ornamental landscape plant. Because right. oh. you think about it, it, it's white flower on a blueberry. Right. I, I love this concept. First of all, white flower on a blueberry. <laughs> Comes out, uh-huh. gets blueberries full yeah. size, wow. and then in the fall it gets a reddish, reddish. pretty reddish color. Oh. And that there are sizes that are small. Like there's there's a dwarf variety dwarf of blueberries that you can use and replace. You could replace boxwood. You could. Yeah, it's yeah. like a dwarf boxwood. You can wow. use it so that it's an ornamental yeah. use on an edible. What a great idea, huh? Yep. Whew. It is. And it's the latest thing in your landscape. So yeah. when you're thinking about your landscape, you're looking at your front, right. see where you could fit in something. Because they're, right. they're using other types of plants, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, like, what else would you put in there? In, in this area? Oh, they, they have uh, blackberries, right? Yeah. You could have that, dwarf, dwarf ones, yeah. and uh, you could incorporate that in there. I mean, 
mint. Is mint. there a better yeah. ground cover? Oh, my I mean, it gets a little crazy, yeah, but, we walk, but you could do different types of herbs. That's right. You could herbs, do mint. You mint. could do catnip. And you could do oregano. They're all beautiful, too. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Strawberries. Strawberries. Strawberries yeah. are good. That's right. Now, and there's that pink variety where it's a pink flowered the strawberry. Pink oh, my. I mean, we, we have those we in have hanging that. baskets, yeah. and it's great. <laughs> I often see our, some of Bloomer's employees oh, snacking yeah. on <laughs> the <laughs> uh, <laughs> strawberries while they're watering. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> but, <laughs> uh, <laughs> but it's it's a different concept. Where it, it used to be that the vegetable garden's a vegetable garden, and it's because of pH, too, like where um blueberries for instance need a, acidic. a an acidic pH. Right. right so do your azaleas so and your rhododendrons right. and you go. your junipers and uh-huh. your spruces and everything else so that's the same ph requirements that's right and that's one thing to check out see what is the ph requirement for where you're putting these plants okay. but if you put them in perennial bed so it's it's mixing all of these different textures in the perfect uh-huh. landscape it's a balance of color texture and form and these dwarf fruits give you that that, whole, that mixture. Yeah. Yeah. They, I work, can, they work. I mean, think about doing like just a border of lettuce. Like so, <laughs> and I mean like butter crunch. Butter uh-huh. crunch is a beautiful, soft green, and it forms a nice head. And it actually, it's pretty ornamental. Yeah. And you just did a border of those exactly. somewhere in your landscape. That's right. Sprinkler system goes off. It's oh, watering it. It doesn't necessarily. If you don't have a garden, you don't have to have a right. a physical garden. That's right. You know, a little structure that yeah. you grow everything. Oh, in. You have to go to the back of the house and get yeah, yeah, yeah blueberries. Right. Right? You just walk out the front door. Yeah, right. I, like, I like that. Yeah, it's, it's breakfast time. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> so you wake up in the morning, go right out and get it. That's Ooh. right. I mean, the strawberries and hanging baskets. Uh-huh. You know, all of these wow. edibles mixed into your landscape. And their ornamental value, and it, and again, it there's it all works together, doesn't it? Like, it is, and that they're compact. It's not like the things that grow out of control. That's right. Now use five footer. Right. That that blueberry I was talking about. Blueberry buckle. Uh-huh. Uh, here's a description: quick growing, a quick growing blueberry that uh-huh. stays compact. White bell shaped flowers, like other blueberries, right. uh, appear in spring, leading to sweet dark blueberries, and they're right. full size. They're uh-huh. not like miniature. Uh-huh. Glossy dark green foliage uh-huh. looks like what? A boxwood. A boxwood. Oh, hey, <laughs> we mentioned that. Man. That's right. Uh, this low water, low chill variety. Uh-huh. And chill is something that how much chill, it's not important for you to know, but uh-huh. I'll, I'll let you in on what it means. Okay. There's so many days of chill or cold mm-hmm. that you re- need in order to get fruit to produce. Oh, I see. In this area, we do it. We get it. We get, we get it. there. Okay. So, so it's, not, it's not a concern. No. Not a concern. That's good to know. Yep. So, and again, an ad- excellent addition to gardens, even in warmer climate, mm-hmm. put it in a pot. Oh, there you go. I like you know, that. that'd be mm-hmm. cool. I love but that. on a patio? Yeah. You know, have uh-huh. an entertaining guest and you start eating Ooh. your, you know, what are you eating? Oh, <laughs> it's like <start> blueberries. <laughs> Oh, I love these. I love the names. Baby K, blueberry buckle. Yeah, blueberry cake. That that's that thornless raspberry. Oh, it is. Oh, that's shortcake. Uh huh. That's that's a thornless raspberry. Oh, brother. And that that baby cake is that thornless blackberry. Mm-hmm. Lots of choices out there. It is. Get out to your garden center. Look at this stuff and look at and oh. think of your landscape as a, and from a different perspective. That's right. Not just ornamentals only. Yes. But integrating perennials and edibles, edibles into together. your landscape yes, you know, your herbs like you're saying yep color texture and form texture and color texture and form that's what it's all about that's right all right oh, coming good. up next uh-huh. we're going to get in the garden again oh good and we're going to talk about planting in the garden we go. we'll be back after this the bird sanctuary at bloomer's home and garden center is dedicated to the care and feeding of wild birds We carry a flock of feeders like the Brome Squirrel Proof Feeder, which has a lifetime guarantee. Brome makes fantastic feeders for frustrating squirrels and feeding songbirds. Bloomer's Bird Sanctuary has a vast selection of wild bird seed, suet, seed cakes, and mealworms. We carry Lyric, Coles, CNS, Pine Tree Farms, and our own line called Bloomer's Blend. Bloomer's Blend Songbird Magnet contains premium black oil sunflower peanut splits, millet, safflower, and tree nuts. It's sure to attract the most colorful songbirds to your yard. Bloomer's Home and Garden Center is located in Washington Township in Gloucester County, New Jersey. Visit us online at www.bloomers.com. 
When you come in, ask for Shirley Spurbeck, Bloomer's Wild Bird Specialist. Mention you heard it on Bloomer's in the Garden Radio, and we'll give you $10 off a 20-pound bag of Bloomer's Blend Songbird Magnet Mix. Spring has sprung, and it's time to visit Bloomer's Home and Garden Center. Bring us a soil sample, and we'll test your soil's pH free. Heck, bring us a water sample from your pond, too, and we'll test that for ammonia and other critical levels. Did you know that Bloomer's has a pond department? We have all of the water treatments, fish, and plants to keep your pond looking glorious year-round. Are you looking for that four-step lawn program? Bloomers carries Scott's, Jonathan Green, Bonide, and Espoma's Organic Step program. Need to seed? Bloomers has its own blend of seed called Township Turf. It's just the right balance of rye, fescue, and bluegrass to give you a spectacular lawn. It's also perfect for repairing bare spots and matches extraordinarily well to sodded lawns. Don't forget the garden. Bloomers carries bumper crop soil amendment and all the fertilizers a garden could need, both organic and inorganic. The best vegetables start as seedlings from Bloomers. Come visit those who know the friendly folks at Bloomers Home and Garden Center. Bloomers is located in Washington Township in Gloucester County, New Jersey, just 20 minutes from Philadelphia. For directions and information, visit www.bloomers.com. That's www.bloomers.com. And we'll see you in the garden. Hi, this is Len Schroeder from Bloomers in the Garden. Do you have a landscape, garden, or plant question? If so, call us on the Bloomers in the Garden hotline. Dial 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. Don't be shy. We want to hear from you. And if we use your question on the air, we'll send you a free Bloomers t-shirt. Call us at 609-685-1880. That's 609 685 one eight eight zero, and we'll see you in the garden. Here we go, lad. We're getting ready to get in the garden and plant something, aren't we? It's ah, time. Yes, it is. It's time. Let's go. It's ready. time. So you start with the soil, right? Right, always. First thing, pH test. That's right. Number one. Bring in your ready soil to, to your local garden center. Okay. Bloomers will do free soil pH test. Right. Um, prefer you come in Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, uh-huh. uh, but pretty much any time. That's and, right. and that's what it's all about. You need to get that pH to about a seven, uh-huh. neutral, mm-hmm. neutral, and then your fertilizers will perform better. You won't uh-huh. have issues with that being locked up in the soil. That's right. Good. Then you have to add organic matter, right? Yes. What's our favorite? Bumper crop. Bumper crop. Yes, so we love it. That's right. Yeah, You're gonna put bumper best. crop and mix that into the soil and get that ready for for plants but now we can plant right spinach Uh, right all the cold crops can be put into the ground right now so get those seedlings get them put into the garden um if you're bringing your plants that you've raised from seeds and you've kept them at like a you know 70 degrees or something you're going to want to put them out and get them acclimated uh, to those nights uh, when it still gets chilly and it still will freeze. Uh-huh. But things like kale, cauliflower, broccoli, uh-huh. spinach, spinach, Brussels sprouts, mm-hmm. cabbage, red right. cabbage, all the right. lettuces, um, all of those are going to be cold tolerant, but you do have to introduce them slow. Right. You can't go right from 70 to yeah. you know, to 32 <laughs> or 30. Oop. Um, the wind also will affect them. Oh, okay. Yeah. So yeah. just keep that in mind. Yep. Keep that in mind. Mm-hmm. So you put them in the garden. Also herbs. Herbs. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. Hey, sure. sign up for bloomers. Herb, herb your enthusiasm. enthusiasm. Yes. That is going to be a fun night. Oh. Uh, I'm just coming for the drinks. Oh, are you? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's wonderful. <laughs> but, uh, uh, I mean, it's, uh, it's going to be a great night learning right. about uh, what herbs to use right. for essential oils and yeah. to use for, for health benefits yeah, health, yes. and to use for cooking. Yes. But cooking. then it's the ones that you're going to use with alcohol oh, to yes. make that That's right. great and, cocktail. Like that. See, <laughs> um, can we go back and talk more about alcohol? <laughs> anyway, but, uh, Stephanie is a oh, great host. Oh yes, she is. She is yeah. running things. Our our MC Master That's of Ceremonies, right. Stephanie Taylor. Oh, wow. She does a great job. That's right. It's a great job. fun night. She makes oh, it fun. She, she makes does. it fun. You know, I have a tendency to be a little bit too technical. That's oh. why Stephanie's doing it. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Stephanie, just, get out of here. Oh, we're right. here. We're here to have fun. That's right. <laughs> we can learn and have fun at the same time. Uh, yeah. So again, 
curb your enthusiasm. Yeah. Sign please up come. for it. Yes, please. Yeah. And Julio will be there. Julio yeah, will absolutely be there for you. Yeah. So putting in herbs now, oh, you can yeah. do things like mints you can do. Yeah. You can do a lot of the oregano, maybe a little soft yet. Yeah. Basil you can't do yet. Basil mm. is one of the first ones to get hit by a frost. How about chives maybe? Chives you can do. Yeah. My chives are busting out of there. Are they really? Oh, wow. yeah. I, I was going to make some uh, La Quiche the other mm. day, and I was going to take some of those chives and cut oh, some of that. Yeah. My, ch- my chives are looking great. That's and good. I have them in a window box. Oh, you do? And uh, behind my house on our deck, yeah, nice. so I can just walk out there and grab them. There you go. Parsley you can put in now, uh-huh. both parsley curly and, uh-huh. and Italian uh-huh. parsley, uh-huh. and uh, it's uh-huh. essential to, to to make sure that uh-huh. if the plants you're buying have been chilled. Uh-huh. Um, if they're outside, more than likely they have been. If they're inside of a greenhouse or they're inside of a, a dare I say it, a store, uh-huh. you don't want them. You, they probably weren't. Yeah. So right. you want something that has been you know it, it's going to have been stepped down to colder weather, colder weather so you don't have any wind issues and other things so and at bloomers and yep. most of your garden centers you're going to have plants that are ready to go right we're, outside yeah we're, we're set to go yeah yeah mm-hmm. yeah and one thing use garden tone mm-hmm. right yeah. use garden tone sure. by a spoma slow yeah. release yeah. Organic, yeah. organic great fertilizer lasts a long time and then you're going to want to follow up with a water soluble fertilizer and you're going to want to do that every couple of weeks for the best results but you want to get something that's specifically for vegetables listen we do our own show here Mm -hmm. miracle grow is okay for flowers and things and it's okay and if if you guys have had success with it great use it that's right but honestly i think it's a little bit too high in nitrogen you 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 maybe should find something that is specifically a water soluble that's for gardens. Right. Now, Miracle Grow has the one that's for tomatoes. Right. That one's okay. Uh-huh. Yeah. You know, right. two different kinds. Mm-hmm. One for flowers, one for mm-hmm. tomatoes. Right. That that'll work. That'll work. Mm-hmm. Right. Right. They have an organic one coming out too. And oh, I, 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 okay. Yeah. We're that's uh, a little late. I don't know why they haven't gotten it yet, but I know that's brand it's new. Coming. It's coming. just out. Oh, okay. Water soluble that you can That's use great. through the spray. Oh, that'll be best. Yeah, it's brand mm-hmm. new. Never That's had a water soluble organic before. Oh, okay. Um, wow. So again, mm-hmm. now that's planting in the ground. Now, what's a veggie pod? Oh, a veggie pod. Oh, <laughs> we, uh, let me tell you what. For those po- folks who can't go down to the ground, like me, I'm a little older. <laughs> <laughs> the veggie pod I'm sits up high. higher. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there you go. Hey. Oh. Well. <laughs> The veggie pod sits up higher, and it's about what uh, three foot high. Four yeah, foot? yeah, comfortable and, height. Co- oh yes, and uh, it's pretty much like a greenhouse effect. It is. Yeah, durable plastic. Durable. Yes, and it's uh, it's made it has self watering. Self watering. I like that idea. Yep. Right. It also has the, like you were saying. It has that. It's not a plastic dome. It's yeah. actually a cloth dome. Cloth dome. Yeah. And it gives insulation uh, against the cold, but it's like it, a mesh, right? Right, and but it also some insects can't get in there. Oh, good. Cabbage loopers. I hate cabbage uh, loopers. Right. Uh, like Put that <laughs> dome down and keep the cabbage, keep the cabbage. loopers off. Yeah, yeah, yeah like they're that. the worst. We've had great success success with that. We have. Yeah. We have. Yeah. And, yeah, and you know, hit. It's just it's just a great thing, especially oh, for, for those of you that are getting, getting up there. Yes. Like Julio. Yeah. Ah, I got you back. Ah, thanks, man. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> anyway, that... It put it on uh-huh. a deck. You can put it on the back patio. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not yep, something, it wheels out, right? Yep. And, or you could just place the unit on, on the ground the without it, a, as they call it, a trolley. Okay. Um, it it has uh, wheels on the trolley, so you That's can right. move it around. It's great, oh. great thing. Oh. You, you come in and take a look. Yeah, you have again to. a veggie pot. It, mm-hmm. it it to me, it's been the best raised bed oh, because goodness. it's easy to use. You replant. Easy. Mm-hmm. They thought of it all. Come Easy through. watering. Yeah. <laughs> the whole yeah. thing. They're right? from Australia. I know. They came they're, from Australia. Isn't that something? And it's also, I think, a shark tank. Oh, a shark tank. Huh? Well, a shark tank that. had some money from Shark Tank. Well, I'll tell you what. Sure. I think that. I hope I have that right. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. It's all good. <laughs> it's all good. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Yeah. Get out there and plant something yeah, this weekend. Go. Yeah. Uh, look Spring at the weather. Spring is here. Oh, yeah. Spring is here. Warm. Yeah, look at that. That's right. All right. We're winding up this segment. We'll be right back after this. Bloomers in the Garden is brought to you each week by Bloomers Home and Garden Center. 
Bloomers is an award-winning garden center just 20 minutes from Philadelphia. Bloomers has been providing expert advice turning brown thumbs green for over 30 years. At Bloomers, we want you to ask us every question, even if you think it's silly. We share information in a friendly, non-judgmental way that is meant to teach and spread the joy of gardening. Visit Bloomers Home and Garden Center in Washington Township, Gloucester County. For directions, go to bloomers.com and we'll see you in the garden. Tired of growing the same old herbs? Do you want to expand your knowledge of herb gardening? Come to Herb Your Enthusiasm Saturday, April 6th at Bloomers Home and Garden Center in Washington Township, Sewell, New Jersey. We'll discuss herbs for cooking, but we'll also expand into herbs for essential oils and herbs for homeopathic medicinal purposes. Bloomers will even demonstrate how to muddle and activate herbs into releasing their aromatic awesomeness to create the best cocktails ever. During Herb Your Enthusiasm, you will plant a container herb garden, and all the starter materials are included with a $45 registration fee. It's going to be a fun night out for couples and friends that you won't forget. Call Bloomers today and register for Herb Your Enthusiasm at 856-589-0200. That's 856-589-0200. If you're looking for more information, just go to www.bloomers.com. So much fun is waiting for you at Bloomer's Home and Garden Center, just 20 short minutes from Philadelphia, and we'll see you in the Herb Garden. See me and Julio down by the school yard. So much to learn. Yes, there is. So, right. so little time. Yes, there is. <laughs> hey, we're wrapping up this show. Yes. Please call us with your gardening questions. Yes. What you're going to do is you're going to call... 609-685-1880 leave us a message mm -hmm. and we'll get back to you with an answer that's right if we use your if we use it on the on the show sure. you get a t-shirt yeah. but it's also we want to hear what you what what you're dealing with yes that's what yeah. we're there for we're you here for we're you. there for you mm -hmm. next week next uh -oh. week we're going to talk about wild birds and how they're a help uh, in the garden uh, -huh. uh landscape, landscape design, design techniques oh, yes. color texture how and form we're going to go into detail about that. And we're going to do organic options in the lawn care, huh, Len? That's right. Not everybody wants to just put down chemical lawns right. and that we have options for you. There you go. Listen, thank you for listening. Yeah. Make sure that you go to our podcast and get that on www.bloomersinthegarden.com. Brett, thank you. We'll see you in the garden. We'll see you in the garden. Bloomers in the Garden is an hour-long gardening radio program that airs to over 6 million residents throughout the Delaware Valley. From Allentown to Wilmington, from the Main Line to the Jersey Shore, Bloomers in the Garden can be heard twice each Saturday morning, first at 8 a.m. on 860 WWDB, and again at 9 on 610 a.m. ESPN Radio. Each episode of Bloomers in the Garden will be broadcast on Bloomers' Facebook page and available as a podcast on bloomersinthegarden.com. Bloomers in the Garden is adding sponsors. Share your message to our large, diverse group of listeners. Commercials and segment sponsorships are available at incredibly affordable prices. Let Bloomers in the Garden get your message out to one of the largest and most diverse populations in the country. If you're interested in joining us in the garden, please visit bloomersinthegarden.com or email len at bloomers.com.